The origin of replication is where the replication of the DNA molecule begins. DNA separates into two strands and opens up a replication bubble. Replicase is an enzyme that untwists the double helix at the replication fork, separating the two parental strands and making them available as template strands. Single strand binding proteins bind to the unpaired DNA strands to keep the strands from repairing. The untwisting of the double helix causes tighter twisting and strain of the replication fork. The tapoisomerase helps to relieve that strain by breaking, swiveling, and rejoining DNA strands. Enzymes that synthesize DNA cannot initiate the synthesis of a polynucleotide. They can only add nucleotides to the end of an already existing chain that is base paired with the template of the strand. The enzyme primase synthesizes the RNA primer. The primase started a complementary RNA chain to form a single RNA nucleotide, adding RNA nucleotides one at a time using the parental DNA strand as a template. The initial nucleotide chain that is produced during DNA synthesis is actually a short stretch of RNA called a primer. The primer is 5 to 10 nucleotides long and base paired to the template strand. The DNA strand starts with a 3' prime end of the RNA primer. Enzymes called the DNA polymerase catalyze the synthesis of the new DNA by adding nucleotides to a pre-existing chain. Most DNA polymerases require a primer and a DNA template strand along with complementary DNA nucleotides lined up. DNA polymerase 3 adds a DNA nucleotide to the RNA primer and then continues adding DNA nucleotides to the growing end of a new DNA strand. The rate of elongation is about 500 nucleotides per second in bacteria and 50 per second in human cells. When the DNA helicase opens up the replication fork, the result is a leading and lagging strand. The leading strand has the 3' prime end, and the end that's near to the replication fork is the 5' prime end. The antiparallel arrangement causes the DNA polymerases to only be able to add to the 3' prime end of a primer or growing DNA strand, which is what enables the strands to be complementary. So DNA polymers to start at the free end, working in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, and runs toward the replication fork. The replication fork opens up on the lagging strand. The 3' prime end is at the base of the fork, and the 5' prime is at the opposite side. It starts from the 3' prime base toward the 5' prime side. When DNA helicase moves forward, the DNA polymers begins doing its job. Here it runs out of track, starting Okazaki segments. The primase adds an RNA primer to the lagging strand. The DNA polymerase 3 connects the RNA primers to form a segment of DNA strand. This only occurs on the lagging strand. The leading strand is continuous, therefore it only needs one RNA primer to be connected. The helicase continues to unzip the DNA. The DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 3, and ligase connect the Okazaki segments on the lagging strand. The DNA polymerase continues onward on the leading strand. On the leading strand, only one primer is required, but for the lagging strand, each Okazaki fragment requires its own primer. Once the Okazaki fragment is formed, the DNA polymer 1 replaces the RNA nucleotides on the adjacent primer with the DNA nucleotides. Once the polymer 1 reaches a spot that has already been replicated, it stops. Since it cannot follow through and attach the segments, DNA ligase joins the final nucleotide of the replacement DNA in the segment of the first DNA fragment of the Okazaki segments. Once the ligase has connected everything, the replication process is complete, and two new DNA molecules are formed. The leading strand is copied toward the replication fork. The lagging strand is copied backwards by being drawn out in loops and copied one section at a time. The lagging strand moves away from the replication fork.